welcome to second pc economics class in previous year you discussed about statistics and indian economic development so in this year you are going to discuss about microeconomics and macroeconomics so what does mean of economics so what are the objectives of economics what are the parts of an economics and what are the advantages everything we have to discuss in this year so first we should know the meaning of economics so economics is a social science economics is a social science which studies the day to day economic activities of human life economics is a social science which studies the day to day economic activities of human life economic activities of human life means what the people are doing every day activities that is producing consuming distributing exchanging so everything these are all called as economic activities so firstly economics is derived from two greek words economics is derived from two greek words one is ekos another one is nomos okay ekos means a house nomos means management so ekos means a house nomos means management so here house means country how to manage the country that is we can say economics an art of household management so economics is art of household management how to manage the country using limited resources because human wants are unlimited human wants are unlimited but resources are limited so when the limited resources are available in this situation how to use that and how to produce goods and services and how to fulfill the human wants that is only we can understand by studying the economics so in this year we can study two parts of economics otherwise two branches of economics one is microeconomics another one is macroeconomics professor adam smith is called as father of economics professor adam smith is called as father of economics okay firstly what uh, how we can uh, justify the meaning of meaning of micro and macro economics first micro economics so micro and macro economics especially the subject matter of economics has been divided into two parts the two parts divided by professor ragnar frisch the two parts divided by professor ragnar frisch at the time of 1920 at the time of 1920 these two parts which one micro and macro economics these two terms were coined or divided by professor ragnar frisch in 1920 okay so here micro means small micro means small macro means large so these two words derived from greek words one is micros micros another one is macros so here micro means small macro means large micro economics deals with the analysis of small units of an economy small units of an economy so in economy we can see small parts and also large parts here micro economics deals micro economics deals with the small units of an economy small parts of an economy for example individual consumer for example individual consumer individual producer that means a producer a consumer individual income individual wages individual savings a particular commodity like this micro economics always studies the small parts of an economy micro economics studies the small parts of an economy so that's why it is called as micro economics it deals with the analysis of small units of an economy small units of an economy now we have to discuss about what is the meaning of macro economics so what is the meaning of macro economics when micro economics studies the small parts of an economy when micro economics studies the small parts of an economy macro economics studies the aggregates of the economy macro economics studies the aggregates of an economy aggregates means total 
aggregates means total so macro economics deals with the macro economics deals with the aggregates of an economy for example national income national output aggregate investment aggregate consumption aggregate same here yeah, aggregate means nothing but total or overall micro means small which studies the small parts of an economy that is called as microeconomics here yeah, macroeconomics deals macroeconomics deals with aggregates of the economy aggregates aggregates means total aggregate means total so macroeconomics deals with the aggregates of the economy for example it can study national income national income but microeconomic studies individual income so macroeconomic studies the national income national output aggregate investment aggregate consumption aggregate savings aggregate demand aggregate supply general employment level general price level interest rate wage level everything so it can study economy as a whole economy as a whole my macroeconomics studies the economy as a whole but microeconomics studies small parts of an economy don't forget microeconomics studies only small parts of an economy macroeconomics studies large parts of an economy micro means small macro means large so macro also concerned with the problems of unemployment economic fluctuations unemployment you know that very well there is no job opportunities that situation called as unemployment and economic fluctuation economic fluctuations means sometimes economy will be goes up economy will be goes down so inflation inflation means when the money value will be decrease prices of goods and services increase when the value of money will be decrease prices of goods and services increase that is called as inflation situation and vice versa that is deflation it is opposite to the deflation deflation means money value will be increase prices of goods and services decrease so macroeconomic studies problems of unemployment economic fluctuations inflation deflation also international trade international trade export import like this and also it studies economic growth economic growth once again i repeat micro means small macro means large so macroeconomics also studies the problems of unemployment economic fluctuations inflation deflation international trade and economic growth so here problems of unemployment it is very important uh, problem of our country that is unemployment and economic fluctuations economic fluctuations like sometimes economy will goes up sometimes economy will uh, decrease like this uh, like goes down so inflation inflation means money value will be decrease price of goods and services increase that situation called as inflation and deflation means opposite to that that means when the price of goods and services decrease money value will be increase that is called as deflation so and also discuss about international trade international trade means export import and also it can study about economic growth so anyhow macroeconomics that is theory of inflation and un unemployment theories of inflation and unemployment are very important subject matter of macroeconomics once again theories of inflation and unemployment theories of inflation and unemployment are important subject matter of macroeconomics again i will explain that is in this year we are going to discuss about micro and macro economics micro and macro economics so micro means small macro means large micro economic studies small parts of an economy macro economic studies large parts of an economy large means aggregate total so this micro economics and macro economics divided by professor ragner frisch at the time of 1920 professor ragner frisch at the time of 1920 what purpose to understand easily the subject matter to understand the subject matter of economics to understand easily that's why professor ragner frisch has divided into two parts one is micro another one is macro now we are going to discuss about what are the difference between what are the differences between micro and macro what are the differences between micro and macro 
so already i said like that micro means small micro means small macro means large micro means small macro means large so what is the meaning of microeconomics so microeconomics deals with the study of the behavior of individual economic units study of the behavior of individual economic units such as a firm such as a firm as like as an industry such as a firm an industry a household units etc so microeconomics which studies the small parts of an economy individual economic units that is a firm a industry household so macroeconomics it deals with the large part of the economy large part of the economy such as aggregates like aggregate demand aggregate supply general price level national income so don't forget microeconomic studies only small parts of an economy microeconomic studies large parts of an economy for example see microeconomic studies the price of a commodity behavior of a consumer behavior of a producer functioning of a firm so price of a commodity behavior of a consumer behavior of a consumer means how the consumer purchase goods and services like how we can take the decisions like less cost like less price to get always he wants to get higher level of satisfaction as like as behavior of a producer Pro always a producer thinks like that or uh, like uh, less cost more profit less cost more profit functioning of the firm functioning of the firm is that is to develop the like industry firm so here microeconomic studies only individual parts of an economy individual parts of an economy what purpose like that is purpose of intensive study purpose of intensive study intensive study means detailed study intensive study means detailed study macroeconomics deals with the large parts of the economy large parts of the economy that is aggregate aggregate means total total demand and total supply general price level national income etc so it studies the aggregates of the economy because like it lumps up of the individual units that is it lumps up lumps up means total lumps totaling of the individual units together into big lump lump for the purpose of brief study so it lumps up the individual units together into big lumps for the purpose of brief study so microeconomics is a intensive study macroeconomics is a brief study so macroeconomics also studies the national income per capita income aggregate demand aggregate supply everything as like as microeconomics is a studying individual units that's why it is called as slicing method microeconomics studies the individual units that's why it is called as a slicing method macroeconomics called as a lumping method because so it's a lumps of lumps of of the small units lump of of the lumps up of the small units it is only discuss about small units it can discuss only large units of the economy so microeconomics each individual economic agent in microeconomics each individual economic agent thinks about its own interest thinks about its own interest and welfare that means always they are thinking about their own welfare their own welfare but macroeconomics agents are different from the individual economic agents because they are always thinking about economic welfare economic welfare not an individual so always think about country's welfare but microeconomics thinks about only individual welfare because see in the microeconomics consumer tries to get maximum satisfaction consumers tries to get maximum satisfaction at lower price always the consumers are thinks about own welfare that means we can say like that consumers tries to get maximum satisfaction at a lower price as like as producers thinks like that maximum profit at minimum cost maximum profit at minimum cost of production minimum cost of production always they thinking like that the cost of production should be less and profit will be more so here in the macroeconomics the macroeconomic agents 
only thinking about welfare of the country only thinking about welfare of the country so here the macroeconomic decision makers are we can say like that government that is state authority as like as reserve bank of india so macroeconomic decision makers are state authority that is government also reserve bank of india also sebi securities exchange board of india securities and exchange board of india so these are all called as economic agents macro economic agents macro economic agents otherwise macro economic decision makers so like this and also micro economics called as partial equilibrium because it is only studies partial picture of an economy it gives only partial picture of an economy macro economics studies general equilibrium because it can give the clear picture of the economy because micro studies small parts of an economy macro studies large parts of an economy so these are differences between micro and macro economics don't forget micro means small macro means large micro economic studies individual behavior of an economy like individual units a producer a consumer a price an industry like this only it can study and macro economic studies aggregate demand aggregate means total it can study economy as a whole so like uh, micro economics in a forest it can study only single tree like macro economic study entire forest like this micro economics studies small parts of an economy it is also called as a slicing method macro economics called as a lumping method micro economics studies partial equilibrium macro economics studies general equilibrium so micro economics also called as a microscopic view microscopic view macro economics is a birds eye view so micro economics studies small parts micro economic studies large parts okay okay any if you have any doubts you can uh, clarify thank you